dated 15,000 years old, but the skin was 21,000 years old. One part of a mammoth is 29,000 years old, another part is 44,000 from the same animal. I give many examples on my website, including a long explanation of how carbon dating is supposed to work, and we'll cover that during Q&A if you'd like. Uh, much more of that in video number seven. The kids are taught, in order to answer this question about the magnetic field declining, they're taught the magnetic field is reversing. This is straight from a textbook saying there are reversed polarity. This is simply a lie. There is no reversed polarity in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. What they discovered was areas of stronger and weaker magnetism. Somebody drew a line through the middle of the sine wave and called everything below average a reversal. Well, that's ridiculous. It's just below average. It's not a reversal. Okay? There are no magnetic reversals in the ocean floor, only areas of stronger and weaker magnetism. There is no place where a north-seeking compass will point south, or vice versa, in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is all part of a much bigger theory about Pangaea. They teach the kids that all the continents used to fit together in a big supercontinent. What they don't tell the kids is they shrank Africa around 40% in order to make them fit for the map. They also don't tell them they took out all of Mexico and Central America. Hey, senor, que pasa? Donde es Mexico? Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala. Hmm. They also don't tell them the obvious. People say, do you think the continents were ever connected? They still are. What do you mean, were they? They always have been. <laughs> the low places are full of water, that's all. What do you think, it's hollow under the oceans or something? <laughs> the shape of the continent is a pure coincidence based on the water level. Any kindergartner could figure that out. So yeah, the continents have always been connected, and they still are. They also don't tell them what anybody ought to be able to figure out by the time they're in third grade. If you take the water out of the oceans, you will notice there is dirt underneath. Okay? These continents are not lily pads floating around in a bathtub. Okay? So there is movement to the continents. I don't argue with that. I taught our science for years. I was just on top of the San Andreas Fault yesterday, speaking in California. Uh, there's no question the Earth's crust is moving some. No question. And when it moves, things fall down. But that doesn't prove this movement's been going on for millions of years. This is just much evidence of a flood. I cover many evidences that the Earth cannot be billions of years old on my seminar tape number one. I believe very sincerely the scientific evidence and the scripture certainly teaches this Earth is not billions of years old. It's only a few thousand years old. I don't know if I'm going to get time to cover everything you brought up here. As far as the, uh, oh, here we go, I do have it here, uh, 226. The salts in the ocean today are 3.6%, 3.6% salt in the oceans. At the current rate of increasing salinity, because every time it rains, uh, groundwater runs into the ocean, bringing with it mineral salts of all sorts of various uh, flavors. The current uh, salinity in the ocean could have been reached in about 5,000 years. And um, the Mediterranean Sea, I don't know how many times it's evaporated. I cover in my video number six one of the possible explanations of how it was backfilled from the oceans filling in a little deeper. But you get higher salt concentrations. There are salt domes, like for instance in Grand Saline, Texas. You dig down into the ground a few feet and you hit pure salt. And you can they have bulldozers working underground digging out this salt, selling it all over the world. Giant salt domes are found all over the world. And all you have to have is a stronger concentration of, of salt and you get much thicker evaporates. In uh, Alaska, no, I'm sorry, in uh, Lompoc, California, where I was uh, a couple months ago, they find uh, diatomaceous earth, the diatoms you mentioned. Uh, diatomaceous earth is found in Lompoc, uh, the saving here, Lompoc, California, thousands of feet thick. And yet all over the world, uh, when they find diatomaceous earth, they are very frequently found, what you mentioned, that you didn't want to talk about, uh, polystrata fossils. For instance, whales, uh, running through eight or ten feet of uh, diatomaceous earth. The kids are taught these layers are different ages. That simply is not logical. Polystrata fossils that he mentioned are trees that are extending up through vertical, vertically up through many layers of rock strata. Now the kids are taught in school each of these layers is a different age. That simply isn't common sense. When you get a tree standing up running through multiple layers of rock, it cannot be that the layers are different ages. That tree is going to rot or fall down before a few million years is up. They're all over the place. I mean, many, many thousands of these have been discovered, and they're just automatically ignored because the kids are taught these layers are different ages. In central Alabama, there's a huge coal field where there are hundreds of petrified trees standing up, running from one seam of coal right through the rock into the next seam of coal. It's called the Blue Creek and the, uh, and the Mary Lee Formation. These trees, when you put them all together, you'll find out that it's evidence that all those layers formed very quickly. I believe it's pretty obvious it formed during the flood. Cookville, Tennessee, they found hundreds of petrified trees, some over 30 feet tall, standing up. Now, if you want to believe those layers are different ages, you're welcome to believe that, but that's not common sense. Nor do I think it's fair to use tax dollars to spread that one religion when there are other ways to interpret this. 
Uh, sometimes the petrified trees are found upside down, running through multiple rock layers. So my position is very simple. God's word uh, is true, and he said there was a worldwide flood about 4,400 years ago that completely covered the world. I don't know that I have all the mechanics of the flood uh, down. I don't, I'd like to see the video when I get to heaven and see exactly what all happened. But uh, the Bible says Noah was in the ark for 13 months. During that time, the crust of the earth is fluxing up and down. You would get evaporation and condensation and refilling and backfilling and all sorts of things happening. Plus, subterranean water coming out would be much hotter. Genesis chapter 7, the fountains of the deep broke open, in which case you get a much higher evaporation rate. It has to do with the latent heat of vaporization. If the water is already hotter, it evaporates much quicker. That's why you boil water to get rid of it. Thank you so much. The next question that we want to uh, propose to our debaters is how does your viewpoint affect behavior in society? And we would like for you to address the, uh, the question is, uh, does this represent a religion? And uh, we'll start with you, Dr. Wagner, once again. All right, last year, uh, the state legislature of Arkansas considered uh, House Bill 2548 at about this time. I believe that started going through in, in March, if memory serves. And there's one provision of this bill. It had you know, a great deal of, uh, of material in it, and I can't possibly summarize it all. Uh, but um, uh, this is one in particular. During classroom instruction conducted by state agencies, museums, zoos, public schools, and political subdivisions of the state, <gasps> when any statement in instructional material is identified by the instructor to be a theory, the instructor shall instruct the class to make a marginal notation. Uh, that the statement is a theory. And I believe this stems from the deep-rooted impulse of uh, the authors and sponsors of this bill to improve accuracy in uh, our textbooks and our educational uh, institutions. Uh, if something has not been proven, it should not be presented as proven. I am 100% in favor of that. And it's not just the theory of evolution that is being taught as fact all over Arkansas. There are theories being taught as if they were fact in the state of Arkansas, the extent of which will shock you. I recently went through the library of the University of Central Arkansas with all of those books, all 350,000 of them or so, uh, purchased at taxpayer expense, and was astonished at what I found at the enormous range of theories of unproven assertions that are being taught as if they were simple facts. And it victimizes everyone, folks. I'll demonstrate. Leaving the question of evolution aside, they are teaching the unproved notion that all life is made of cells. This is called the cell theory. It was come up with by um, two German botanists named uh, Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann in 1841. But it's only a theory. It has not been absolutely proven. And yet the medical students in our University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences are being victimized by being taught only the cell theory and not alternatives. Shut up. <laughs> You'll find references in these books, in our, in our textbooks and our, our library books, to the germ theory of disease concocted by Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. This is the unproved notion that microscopic bacteria, which you can't actually see with your unaided eye, can make you sick. And it's labeled as such in the textbooks and in the reference books that we deal with. It is only a theory, it is not proven, that opening unmarked envelopes sent to you and breathing in white powder that you find is actually bad for you. We cannot.